Hey, everyone. I'm Greg from Oxen AI, and I'm here to quickly walk through a demo of the Oxen command line tools, the Oxen web hub. You can follow along with all of this on docs.oxen.ai, which is the page that I'm looking at here. And I'm kind of going to assume you understand what version control is and that you are a software engineer. Um, if you don't know any of that stuff, we have other videos and blog posts describing that. But I just wanted to set the baseline. If you understand Git, if you understand GitHub, a lot of this is going to make sense to you. Um, and if you understand why Git or GitHub falls over when it comes to data sets, even better. So what is Oxen? Oxen is a lightning fast data version control system for structured and unstructured machine learning data sets. Oxen's interface mirrors Git, but shines in many of the areas that a Git or a Git LFS fall short. It was built from the ground up for data. So this means CSV, Parquet files, and it's also optimized to ha handle large files such as model files and large amounts of files. Maybe you have a directory of hundreds of thousands of images or you have a bunch of videos. Uh, Oxen scales from a single CSV all the way up to these large machine learning data sets that we all know and love and have kind of led to the AI revolution. So what I'm going to do here is I have a local set of data, these CSV files. We're going to keep it simple, keep it to a relatively small data set here to get started, just to get you up and running with the tooling. But this particular example is a COVID-19 PCR testing data set. I'm going to head over to the web hub where you can see I've been dabbling with some LLM use cases. But today, we're going to not do the generative stuff. We're going to do more of the classic machine learning type use case. I'm going to create a repository called COVID-19 PCR testing. I'm going to keep it private for now. You can have public repositories where you can share data with the world. And if you're familiar with GitHub, if you're familiar with Git, these first steps are going to make a lot of sense to you. Uh, not a lot of learning curve here. We can initialize our local repository, we can add a this COVID-19 file. And if we look, uh, I actually have a bunch of different versions of this file. So let's be of a good version control citizen and first uh, rename this to a canonical name rather than using dates as the versioning or like an underscore V2. That's just ridiculous. And Oxen also has some like handy command line tools to take a peek into this data before we push it up into the hub. It looks like we have this COVID-19 data set with 879,000 rows and nine columns. It's got some state names. It's got some dates. It looks like a time series data set. And uh, it's got new results reported, total results reported, geocoded state, all this, all this fun stuff. So that's cool. Um, I'm just going to add it just like you wouldn't get you just, for just as we're going through this, you can kind of replace get in your head with oxen. Um, and then I'm going to commit the data. Uh, I'm adding the data from what was that? That was July. So adding data export from July, uh, 2nd, 2023. And let's push that up to the hub. First, I got to connect the remote to the hub, with that one liner that we can copy and paste. And then I'm going to push the data up there so we could do a little more exploratory data analysis. Um, Oxen is really built to dissect these data files and make it really easy to view in the UI if you are doing this in GitHub and came back over. Uh, the first thing you'll notice if you click on the file we can actually see what's in this data set and it's nine columns and 179,000 rows. Uh, that's cool, uh, not super mind blowing that we can plot a CSV table in the UI, but hey, a step in the right direction. Um, so let's take, it what I, take a look at what I have here. Uh, I have another export of the data that looks like it's from November. So you can imagine the workflow of like, one data team 
managing your Postgres instances or your structured data tables. And there you want to hand over this data to a machine learning team or a team of data scientists that want to uh, run experiments in the lab, et cetera. And they don't want to give them access to the full database because that's constantly updating and changing. They want to kind of take a snapshot, send it over the wire. Um, that's kind of the workflow and use case we're, we're working with here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this over. Um, if you do an auxin status, you can tell, you can see that auxin detected that it was modified. Um, if we do an auxin diff on it, it cranks through all those 200,000 lines, finds a lot actually changed between version one and version two. I guess it's been three months since this data has been updated. And it wasn't just pure additions either. It looks like some rows were removed. Maybe there's some data cleaning within the process. I don't really know, but all I do know is that we have two very different versions of this file now. So I am going to add that. I am going to commit it. And I think this one looks like it was, what was that? November 8th, so yesterday, November 8th. Obviously, you can have this verbose of commit messages as you'd like, but I'm going to keep it simple here. And then oxen push origin main, just like your git push. Uh, we'll watch the fun little oxen progress bar as it pushes this 12 megabytes to the server. Uh, pretty quick, pretty easy. Um, you can see this file was updated right now. We have three commits. Uh, the initial repository commit, adding the data from July, and then adding the data from November. So let's dive in here, see what happened. We can see those 93,000 rows added. Blow this up so you can see 57,000 removed. And let's click in and see what all changed. So the first thing we can see when we dive in, we kind of have these four tabs here. Uh, current version, the version before the changes, the added rows, and the root removed rows. That's a good start. You can go and view the current file in the new tab if you'd like. You can go to the before changes, um, do some exploratory data analysis. You can straight through the UI, download either of those versions. Um, you can see one of them has, you know, they have different amounts, and you might want to do some exploratory data analysis on each of those. Um, so that's like a simple, just like we have the same schema, but new data. Um, but what I'm going to do is create a new branch. So Oxen check out reformat data. This is where it gets a little more interesting. Um, and I, oops, can't spell LS. Uh, I have this same export from, um, the 8th of November, and I just added a underscore v2 because, you know, I this is before I learned about Oxen and the great version control capabilities of it. But let's just fearlessly copy that over on top of this Oxen status. It's been uh, changed. Let's add it. Let's commit it um, with my reformatting. And let's push this to the reformat data branch. So now we've got two parallel histories of our data set. Um, you can see that this one is a little larger than the last one. It's pushing the data up. And let's go back to the home here. Aha, we've got a reformatted data branch. So now this one has four commits. Our main branch just has three commits. Let's go to the reformatted data export with my opinionated file name, or not file name, column names. Um, and you can quickly see here that, oh, it looks like I removed the geocoded state um, column that we had before. I renamed a lot of these other columns and these are pretty simple examples, but pretty, pretty illustrative of, you know, 
the types of simple changes that you'd want to be able to catch and flag before you send this data into downstream applications. Um, so a lot more to come in the UI. Uh, we've built out a lot of this infrastructure. We've optimized it so you can add, you know, 200,000 images in less than a second. It's really built for speed. Um, it's easy to learn, same commands as Git. It has this native data frame processing capability in here. And I'd love uh, to have you guys kick it around to try out the command line interface. There's a Python interface. Um, it's all open source, so you can go and check out the open source repository here. Um, feel free to contribute back. We got Rust, we got Python, we got HTTP interfaces. And um, we love to say that every GitHub star gives an ox its wings. And uh, we're not just saying that. We actually hooked up a stable diffusion model to <laughs> generate an ox with wings every time you give it a star. So feel free to reach out at hello.oxen.ai with any questions. Feel free to dive into the developer docs to learn the basics, dive deeper, and can't wait to see what you built. Thank you.